so you guys can see what I'm working on. Okay, so today I'm gonna be using um, Benjamin Moore paint in the advanced line. There is the color name there if you're wondering. And I'm gonna be using a brush and a roller to do this project. Um, a few of you left me some questions on Facebook and Instagram, so I have those here and I will be answering them. Just kind of tilt that up a bit. We'll work on this surface first. I'm gonna go ahead and just get my supplies set up. So I'm gonna be using a microfiber roller and a one and a half inch paintbrush. I'm just opening my paint can with a flathead screwdriver because that's all I have on hand right now. And I'll show you this color up close because it is super pretty. You guys can see that. And I have a quite, a, quite a few questions today to go through. So I will get started on that right away. Okay. Okay, so one of the first questions I have is, do you always sand your pieces? And yes, prep work is key to a good finish. Um, I always sand my pieces, making sure that they're super smooth. Um, even if they look like they're fine, they're ready to go, you still wanna always sand um, because it's gonna help your paint adhere better. So to paint the top of this, I'm gonna go ahead and roll the top. When I use um, Benjamin Moore, the advanced line of paint, I find rolling it goes on super smooth rather than brushing it. It levels out really nicely. So I'm just gonna get my roller ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint the top of this. So if you're wondering what I did to this piece previously, I went ahead and sanded it all down, cleaned it, primed it, sanded it again, so it was nice and smooth, and then cleaned it again before I went ahead and painted it. And this will probably take three coats, um, four, maybe, we'll see how this first coat goes on. And if you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the live chat as well. more questions I'm going to go ahead and answer once I get this top painted. Okay. SP, which is a degreaser formula for cleaning your pieces. Um, yes, that or water, depending on what I'm working on, but pretty much just a TSP, I use the powder and then I go ahead and dilute it with water and I use it in a spray bottle. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you would see me using that. Um, I've always used that and that's what I like to use, so I'll definitely stick to it unless I find something that works better. You guys can already kind of see the color on this coming together. I'm gonna go ahead and do some of the detail painting in here with my brush and then go ahead, ahead and roll it. So another question from Facebook as well. Uh, will you not paint certain pieces if there is too many scratches or veneer peeling? No, I would still paint them, but you have to go ahead and I would do the prep work. Um, and if you're doing it yourself as well. So 
would fill any scratches and if there is veneer peeling either remove it all completely or try to fill it glue it and save it but sometimes if it's really bad you just have to remove it all and that is a very tedious process so I wouldn't recommend it especially if you're just starting out it's not something I like to do I try to stay away from that but if I came across that I would um, repair it If I can share this live, I'm going to share it to our Facebook page right now. Perfect. So that got shared. So more here. cut off um, our Wi-Fi has been terrible so I just put on my data and I'm gonna keep going okay so another question I have is do you always paint three coats of paint um, and this just depends really what I'm working on so um, if it was like this color here over top of this white primer is gonna take three to four coats um, if I was painting white, I would do two coats of primer and then four coats of paint, so that's six coats total. It really just depends what you're covering. I mean, sometimes you can get away with two coats of paint. Um, on average, I like to at least do three, just so I know everything is super covered. So these questions are all from Facebook. Another one is how many containers of paint do you go through for one piece? So the quart size of the Benjamin Moore paint that I'm using for this piece here, um, I will definitely have some leftover. Um, I don't know if it will be enough for a whole piece. Just depends how many coats this is. If I was using Fusion, I could definitely get about um, two like medium sized dressers. If they were primed and everything and didn't have to do a ton of coats, I could get two out of that little pint. And with the Benjamin Moore as well, it just depends on the coats. So really, if you're wondering like for yourself, it's really just a lot of trial and error. You need to figure out what works for you. So I'm just going in the corners here. And if you're new to using the Benjamin Moore Advanced line, I kind of stumbled upon it this fall, more winter per se, um, and I am loving it. It has a built-in top coat, so you pick your finish. It's super, super durable. The only thing is it does take 16 hours to dry, but trust me, it is worth it. The finish that you get in the end is definitely worth the wait. You guys can already see the color. It's a nice dark gray, not quite black, um, but it's super pretty. Another question, I just have all my questions here on this sheet, is do you paint the back of your pieces? And no, um, I know some people do, some people don't. It's personal preference. Unless it's a piece that you're gonna see, sorry, um, from the other side, like if you were putting it against a railing from your stairs, um, unless it's requested, I won't usually do it because majority of the time your piece is against a wall and to go through that extra work of painting the back of a piece, a lot of the times they are um, like an MDF per se on the back um, and there's different steps to going ahead and painting that. So if it's going to be covered anyways, I don't usually um, take the steps to do that.
Like, if it makes you happy, do it, but it's definitely not necessary. Okay, another question we have is, if you see paint strokes um, after a piece is dried, do you lightly sand it and go back over it? Yes, yeah, so let's say for example, I brushed the top of this piece and I noticed you could see the brush strokes. Before going ahead and doing a second coat, I would lightly sand it. Um, if it needed like severe sanding, I might just start over, but usually you can get away with just lightly sanding it and then going ahead and doing a second coat. Like I mentioned before with the Benjamin Moore Advanced line, when you roll like the top or something like this, it levels out so nicely. You don't even need to really worry about that. Okay, this is starting to come together. At the end of the live, I will definitely show you guys I'm just gonna see if I can get in on the live chat. Okay, so love your work. I just started to flip furniture. What are your best staining tips? Uh, I've just started using conditioner for stain. So for me, I have never used the stain conditioner before. I always make sure to super, super sand down um, a piece if I'm gonna be staining it. So let's say this top, I was gonna be staining it. I would sand it down and make sure everything is out from the original stain. And then I would go ahead and apply it uh, with, I put on a, uh, sorry, a glove and then an old sock. And that's my best way to apply it. I would rub it on the whole piece. And then if there's any excess that I noticed, I would get another cloth and just wipe it. Um, and then if you want it darker or if you notice that it needs a second coat, go ahead and do a second coat. Um, and then I like to use a polyurethane on top of painted finishes and wood finishes, but especially over stain. And I use a satin finish and I use a foam brush for that. Some of my previous videos actually show you how to do that process if you're interested. Um, I can try to link them down below when the video isn't live anymore. And you guys can check that out. I recently top coated a desk I used paint wash for and I used that same process that I would use for stain so you guys can see that but yeah I've never used like a preconditioning stain so I can't really say if it's worth it or not I've never had an issue where I felt like I needed to use it but I could do a video soon maybe trying out some new products that I've never tried um, because I've always wanted to try more brands and products, but I also don't want to test them on a client's piece or a piece that I am trying to flip. But if it's for a video and I can kind of test them, sample them, you could do that. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Another question I have is, I just painted a piece that I didn't sand and it shows the scratches. So if you haven't top coated it yet, go ahead and wood fill all those little scratches, nicks, and then go ahead and paint again. Um, that's why prep work is so important. You wanna do all those steps before you get to painting so you don't have to worry. Um, if you did already top coat it with a wax or a poly, go ahead and lightly sand it down um, you don't have to sand it down to the bone, but just sand it pretty good so you can um, get your wood filler in there and then your paint will stick. So I'm just doing the side part here and then I'll come around to the front. This piece also has doors and shelves for in here, but for the sake of the live video, I'm just gonna paint them off camera and I'm gonna spray the hinges and put those back on once everything's complete. So do you top coat all your pieces is another question from Facebook and yes. Whether it's a small little plant stand, a little table that's not gonna get a lot of use. Um, I tend to use like a wax finish. I have a really nice one from Fusion Mineral Paint. It's a lavender scented, which is really nice. Um, 
like the Benjamin Moore paint already has the top coat built into it. And like I said, you can pick your finishes. You can get pearl, matte, semi-gloss, gloss. So that I kind of talk about um, with my clients and decide on that. And then um, it already has it built in, so I don't need to do that. Over Fusion Mineral Paint, I like to use the polyurethane and the satin finish. Again, there's multiple videos on that on my channel. So if you guys are interested in learning how to top coat your pieces and make sure they're super durable, that has been the best top coat for me and what holds up the best. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep painting over here. Get my brush down in here. And I just have this piece, I know you guys can't really see, but it is on some furniture wheels. So I can move it around in my workspace the best way to move your pieces around, especially if you're by yourself. And there's two more questions from Facebook. This one is, do you only use fusion stain and finishing oil or tough coat? And no, I've already kind of answered that. I have used their tough top coat before, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I find it kind of Hard to work with and their finishing oil I have used um, but like I said I find the polyurethane the best uh, for durability and the last question from Facebook is how long do you wait to sell a piece or resell with the top coat to cure so a lot of paints and top coats recommend anywhere from two weeks to 30 days um, so if I painted a piece let's say I finished painting this today I'd wait a day or two uh, to deliver the piece or to sell it, but I would stress to my clients that they need to wait before they use it. If they're just gonna go ahead and use it right away, it is not gonna hold up. Um, the same as if you were to wait and let it fully cure. So I find like the polyurethane, I know for myself, I've used it right away and it's fine, but when you're reselling stuff, you wanna be safe and make sure your clients understand that they need to take that time to let the piece fully cure gonna get this edge here and then I'm gonna move on over there and when the live video is over I will go ahead and pull these drawers out and do all the little detail painting on the sides but I did want to just kind of show you guys me painting this. So another question I have is, I am just starting out any beginner tips. So beginner tips, one, if you've already started, you've already, first step is just getting yourself out there and starting. Um, get a couple pieces, even if they're free or super cheap, and start testing out your style, different techniques. Um, you can really learn best through your experiences. And we have another question from the live chat. Do you do work for other countries, I believe? And right now I just do work in Canada. I am based in Toronto, Canada, just north of there. Um, I would love to start shipping out pieces. Um, hopefully in the future, I'm hoping this year to kind of get that figured out. Um, because I have had a few questions about that and I would love to offer that. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint the inside shelves here. question from Instagram if you're not following our Instagram it's furniture flip by Sarah and I put up a little question box um, usually a day before we go live and you guys can leave me your questions there so do you always um, prime before applying any sort of paint even chalk paint on furniture and I haven't always primed um, I like to prime especially when I'm working with like let's say the polyurethane because the only downside to that is it does cause yellowing so let's say I was painting a piece I didn't prime it I used a fusion mineral paint and then I went ahead and polyed it 
Um, anything that is like underneath the wood, maybe something spilled, a cleaning product was soaked into it, it's going to come up and it's going to cause yellowing. Um, I've had it even with darker colors, it'll come up green. Um, so you want to make sure to prime. If I'm going to be using a wax finish and I'm going to be using like a darker color, then I don't need to necessarily prime if it's like a smaller item, but I always recommend to, especially if you're reselling, because you want to make sure that piece is going to hold up uh, down the road. But if you're just starting out and you're like testing kind of your style and how to paint, go ahead and paint a couple pieces, uh, maybe even without primer, just until you get the hang of it. And then add the primer in there and figure out what's best for you. We have a couple more questions and I'm going to finish up painting. If you guys do want to see the end result of this piece, make sure you head over to our Instagram because I will share it on there when it's all done. So another question was, what type of platforms do you use to post your items? So. Um, if you've been following along with us, we have our website where we post our pieces. We also have um, our Instagram page where we do actually sell quite a few pieces directly off of our Instagram page. Um, and it's kind of funny when I first started this um, and everyone was like, oh, make an Instagram page for your business. I, at the time I just had Facebook and I thought that's kind of weird. Like I didn't like think about like business wise having an Instagram. I thought it was more for like your personal photos and whatnot. But it really does make a huge difference for your business. And we also sell our pieces on Facebook Marketplace. So everywhere kind of has your pros and cons. Um, the only downside to Facebook is you get a lot of people lowballing you or offering you like half the price and they don't understand. They think, oh, it's like a place to get a deal. Um, but like you also got to hold your ground and like you put your work into these pieces. So you want to account for that. and. Just because a couple people are lowballing you, don't think you have to adjust the price. That's why I just I feel like Facebook Marketplace sometimes can be a little discouraging uh, for those reasons. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here. Get some more painting in. I'm just answering a few more questions. Okay. So another question we had, which I believe is the last question is again, where do you sell your furniture? And I just kind of answered that. Um, if you are someone new who's starting out to furniture or you've just been doing this for a while and you want to have a little bit of more platforms to sell your furniture. Um, I know a lot of girls sell on Etsy as well, but I would recommend just creating your own website that's unique to you. And then you can put what you want on there. You don't have to pay another platform to sell your pieces, like Etsy, for example. And again, you can sell them directly off your Facebook page um, or your Instagram page as well. You don't need a fancy website or anything like that, um, but it definitely does help and it is more professional. I'm just going to see. I don't have the live chat directly set up, so I'm just checking it every once in a while to see if you guys have any more questions. I will go ahead and get on all of those little grooves after this video is done. But for the sake of the view of the camera, this is what I can paint for now. I'm just going to go ahead and paint in here and then I'll probably wrap up today's live video. If you guys have any requests, definitely leave them in the comments or in the live chat. And 
we will get to them. And this brush, I did want to mention, uh, I've recently started using it and I picked it up at the Benjamin Moore store. It was actually recommended to me. I don't know the exact name, but it is, I believe, a poly brush and it works amazing with this paint. So I definitely recommend it has yellow bristles if you're going into a Benjamin Moore anytime soon, definitely pick that up. And I believe it was under $10. I would love to also know where you guys are from. If you want to leave um, a comment or talk in the live chat. I know we had a question about working in other countries or with other countries, with people in other countries, so I'd love to know where you guys are from. Okay, I'm just going to do this last little shelf here, and then I think... We will end out today's live video. I will show you guys um, the piece up close. Take the camera off the tripod so you guys can kind of see how the paint is going on and applying. Get the front here. guys up close so there is the piece I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting all of the details and getting in the little crevices but thank you guys so much for watching today's live video and I will see you next Monday with another live bye